Hello, St. Mark. Happy Easter. Since we're not able to have in service worship, we want to come to you today by way of this taped message. Right now, we are under a lot of bands. The stay-at-home band, the shelter-in-place band, the social distancing band. And we understand these bands because what they are doing is trying to help us to mitigate the number of cases related to the coronavirus, try to help to flatten the curve. And we definitely want to adhere to all of these uh, bands that have been handed down by the medical professions as well as by the local, state, and government officials. And we just want to use good common sense as we do these things. But while we are also under these bands, we, as a church, want to stay connected one with the other. So St. Mark, I want to encourage you uh, to continue to stay connected one with the other, call each other, let's look in on each other, let's pray for one another. Also, as we are praying for each other, we want to continue to pray for those who are on the front line, those who are putting their lives in harm's way so that we may stay healthy, so that we may be safe. Really, this uh, coronavirus has taken all of us by surprise. Everybody right now is scrambling. The church is scrambling. Companies are scrambling. Corporations are scrambling. Our government is scrambling as well. So we just want to pray for them. We want to pray for our leaders. We want to pray for those who are small business owners. We want to pray for those who are unemployed right now, those who are having to file for uh, unemployment. Let's just keep each other, keep this country in prayer. And more importantly, we want to make sure that we stay sensitive to what God is saying to us and to what God wants us to do. Just like the band uh, does not prevent us from being in the church, it also does not hinder or limit the word of God. And so this is one of the reasons why we're here today. We want to stay connected with you and we'll also continue to communicate with you. Uh, we, before we conclude, we want to have a time of communion. And we hope that you have some crackers handy or a piece of bread, some juice, so that when we get to that part of this service, you can participate with us in this time of since this is the Easter season, we do have a word that we would like to share with you today that God has given to me. Hopefully you have your Bibles, and I'll give you a few minutes to get your Bibles out. And once you do, I want you to turn, if you will, to the Gospel according to Luke. Luke chapter 24. And I want to use as our text verses 1 through 12. So Luke 24, verses 1 through 12. And it reads like this. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them with their faces to the ground. And the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, 
and the other with them who had told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran into the tomb. Then and over he saw the strips of linen linen lying by themselves. And he went away wondering to himself what had happened. I want to preach about the empty promises of Easter. Yes, the empty promises of Easter. You know, this is an election year, and oftentimes during the election year, a lot of promises are made. Promises to build, promises to fix, and in some cases, promises to give everything away. But once the White House is won, oftentimes, the promises that were made on the campaign trail end up just being empty promises. Instead of promises full of emptiness, God gives us emptiness that's full of promise. And there are three examples of this that I want to share with you today from our text. First, we see the empty cross. Now, we would have to go back a few chapters to see that it was on a Thursday night that Jesus was arrested, he was tried, and he was lied on. And as a result of that, it was on that Friday he was crucified on a cross. It's when we come to chapter 23, starting at verse 50, that we are introduced to an individual by the name of Joseph of Arimathea. The three things that we can say about Joseph of Arimathea real quickly. One is that he was a religious man. Two, he was a righteous man. And three, he was a rich man. Did I say he was a rich man? Yeah, Joseph was a rich man. Who was the one, by the way, that went to Pilate and asked permission to take the body of Jesus down from the cross? Joseph of Arimathea was the one who was instrumental in the one who was born in a virgin womb to be buried in a virgin tomb. More of our churches today need Joseph of Arimathea. The promise of the empty tomb is that God has forgiven us. That's the good news today, that God has forgiven us. For the scripture tells us all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. And none of us were able to do anything about that. But God demonstrated his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For without the shedding of blood, the scripture tells us, there is no forgiveness of sin. So the empty cross is really our receipt that our debt for sin has been paid in full. But not only do we see the empty cross, it's when we move to our text today, starting at verse 1, that we see the empty tomb. For we're told that it was early one Sunday morning that the women came to the tomb to finish the burial process of Jesus. But when they got there, they were met with a surprise. Not only had the stone been rolled away, but the tomb itself was empty. And the scripture tells us that suddenly two men who, who were dressed in clothes that was bright like lightning appeared out of nowhere. And they asked the women this question, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here for he has risen just as he said. Can I suggest to you today that the reason why they were looking for the living among the dead is because they failed to remember what the Lord had already told them on numerous occasions before 
that he must be delivered, that he must be crucified, and that on the third day, rise again. Now how often, church, is it that we too find ourselves forgetting God's word? Even though God has already told us on numerous occasions before, even though God has already spoken to us through his word, but oftentimes we too, like these women, we find ourselves forgetting what the Lord has already told us, only to end up living lives of defeat. Instead of being victorious, we find ourselves being victims. Instead of thriving, we find ourselves just surviving. And it's all because we have forgotten what the Lord has already told us. Now here's the promise of the empty tomb. The promise of the empty tomb is a risen Savior. Here is why we celebrate Easter. Because we serve a Savior who has risen from the dead. And because he is alive, we too can experience eternal life. This is why he told Mary, I'm sorry, Martha, who is the, was the sister of Lazarus, that I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Because Jesus lived, we too can live also. When Jesus rose from the grave that Sunday morning, not only did he defeat the grave, he also defeated death. This is why Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? We have the promise of the empty cross, and the promise is that God has forgiven us. We have the promise of the empty tomb, and that is a risen Savior. And because he lived, we can live also. But it's then when we get to verse 12 here in our text, we see the promise of the empty burial floor. We're told that when Peter ran to the tomb, that he stooped down and, and after having looked in and closely examined what was inside the tomb, the only thing he saw were the empty burial clothes. Now here's the promise of the empty burial clothes. A new relationship has now been created. When we look at John's account of this event, this particular part here is made clear because when Jesus made his first post-resurrection appearance to Mary Magdalene. It was out of joy that she could not stop clinging on to him. It was out of joy that she could not stop holding on to him. But he commanded her to stop. And the reason for that was because now his relationship with his disciples had now transcended from just a physical presence with them to now something far better and greater, which is an intimate, permanent, spiritual relationship with him. This is why Jesus told us that it's to your advantage that I go away, so that the Holy Spirit can come. Because when the Holy Spirit comes, no longer will I live with you, but now I'm going to live inside of you. What are you going to do to guide us? live inside of us to encourage us, live inside of us to comfort us, so that when something like a pandemic comes, we're going to fall apart. We thank God for the promise of the empty burial clothes. We thank God for the empty promises of Easter. Because with the empty promises of Easter, we have the promise of the empty cross, which is that God has forgiven us. We have the promise of the empty tomb, which is that we have a risen Savior. And because he lived, you and I can live also. Then there is the promise of the empty burial clothes. A new relationship has now been created. Jesus not just walks with us, but now by way of the power of the Holy Spirit, he lives in us. To empower us, to guide us, to comfort us. 
He came so that we may have life and so that we may have it more abundantly. Perhaps there is somebody who's viewing this message today and you don't know Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. And the good news today is it is very simple. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. The truth of the matter is, if you would just accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and as your Lord, you can be saved. And if you have done that, we want to invite you to connect with us by going on our webpage, stmarkdallas.org. That's S T. M-A-R-K-D-A-L-L-A-S dot O-R-G. Connect with us there. Give us a chance to in turn connect with you. Now, St. Mark, although we're not able to be together in worship, we still want to remember our financial commitment to the kingdom of God. And so we ask that you will keep up with your commitment. And there's two ways that you can do that. You can either go online to our web page, you can give that way, or you can just drop your offering in the mail. And you know the address, 4536 Phillips Street, Dallas, Texas, 75223. It is now at this time that we want to direct our attention to the Lord's table where we're going to be led in this time of communion by our chairman of Deacon Board, Deacon Reeves. Hopefully you, you have the elements available, cracker, a piece of bread, and juice, so that you can share up with us in this time of communion. After we have finished with communion, we'll come back and we will have our benediction. Morning, saints. We are here on this glorious day to celebrate the resurrection. I have a scripture to read when we meet up in two hours of communion service. And it's coming from 1 John, chapter 4, verse 11 and 12. And it reads, Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Amen. Now, if you will, On the same night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he blessed it. Thank you, Father, for the bread, for the flesh. And he gave it to the disciples and break it and said, Take, eat. This is my body. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, he took the cup and he gave thanks. Thank you, Father. And then he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink ye out of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. And when they sang a song and a hymn, they all went out to the Mount of Olives. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Deacon Reeves. St. Mark, remember to stay connected. May the Lord said the same. We'll be back before you next week. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Is our prayer. Have a great day. Have a great Easter.